All right, my dear students. Today, the topic that we do have is depreciation, and we are working on month-wise depreciation. In month-wise depreciation, we actually count the actual number of months we have used the asset, and we are going to depreciate that asset accordingly. Now, let me start with this exercise, question number 13. Mr. A.R.D. bought a fixture that is a piece of furniture on 30th September 2019. This is the purchase date for 150,000. This is the cost of the non-current asset. Year is ending for Mr. A.R.D. on 30th June. Uh, now you uh, know it's not necessary that year ends on 31st December each year. Sometimes if we are starting the business midway through the year, so therefore the year can end other than 31st December. Okay, and if the year is ending on 30th June every year, then the new year new financial year would going to start on 1st July okay we have sold the fixture on which date on 1st February 22 that is our last year depreciation rate is 20% per annum on cost cost means it's a straight line method okay then what do we have other than that we need to calculate depreciation expense for three of the years that is 30th June 2020 21 and 22 so let us start with 30th June 20 20 sorry 2019 first year is no it's actually 2020 but we have bought the asset on when when on 30th september 2019 so this is the date on which we have actually bought the asset and the cost of the furniture was 150 now first year is ending on 30th june 2020 now what are we supposed to do we need to count the months from 30th september till 30th june now as you can see we have bought the asset on 30th september Therefore, we haven't used the asset in September. Okay, so the asset usage will start on 1st of October. Okay, if we count the month from October 2019 till 30th June 2020. So this month's October, November, December, January, February, March, April, May and June. So this become 9 months. So we can also see uh, this way that uh, after September, uh, it's October, November, December, three months for 2019. October, November, December, three months for 2019, and six months for 2020. Okay, so three plus six, this becomes nine months. So we need to chart depreciation for nine months. First of all, we need to apply 20% to the original cost that is 150,000, and if we charge 20% uh, to 150,000, this would becomes, uh, I guess, 30,000. 30,000 is the annual depreciation. But we need to chart depreciation for nine months only. Why? Because it is a month-wise policy. In month-wise policy, we always charge depreciation for the exact number of months we have used the asset. Okay. So as you can see, depreciation uh, is twenty-two thousand five hundred instead of thirty thousand because we are applying month-wise policy. Now let us move further. Next year, that is twenty-nine. Next year is thirtieth June twenty. Uh, after 2020 becomes 21. In next year, as you can see, we are using the asset for the entire year. Why? Because we had the asset from the start of the year, that is from the first day of the year. So therefore, we don't need to uh, prorate this next year. We just need to apply depreciation 150 times 20% because in the straight line, normally uh, depreciation is equal for every year. Uh, unless and until we have sold the asset or we have just bought the asset so and if it's not the case the depreciation would be the same every year okay so as you can see in the first year we have bought the asset we haven't used the asset for entire year we have just used the asset for nine months but in the second year as you can see we have used the asset for uh, full 12 months but what happens in the third year now year is ending on 30th june 22 but we have sold the asset on 1st February. Now, as you can see, we uh, weren't able to use the asset on 22 February. We have just the, used the asset till January 22, okay? So we need to uh, chart depreciation till January only because on 1st February, we sold the asset actually, okay? So we need to count the month from July uh, till January, okay? So, if the year is ending in June, this means the year must have started on July, 1st July. So, we need to count from July till January. So, July, August, September, October.
October, November, December. This was six months, and after December would come January. So there are seven months that we have used the asset in this year. So we need to charge seven months of depreciation. Why? Because it was a month-wise policy. Now I sometimes give example uh, to my students so that whenever uh, you born in this uh, world, whenever uh, was our date of birth, so we do not uh, see the actual date that we should uh, born uh, on first January. Okay, we sh uh, we should take a birth on first January because that that's not in our hands. Okay, so most of us ha haven't uh, lived for the entire year, the year that we were born. Okay, so my birthday is in July. So I have uh, maybe only was in this world uh, the year I was born for maybe few months, not the entire year. But if someone uh, borns on first January, so it may be some lucky guy. So therefore he uh, or she must be uh, in this uh, world for the 12 months in the year in which they were born. Okay, and the year in which we will die, no one knows uh, whenever we will die. So the year in which we will be dying, so we most of the, uh, us will be dying uh, halfway through the year because we are not concerned with the accounting in this, and actually this is not in our hand to die. Uh, so therefore, so the, in the year of birth and in the year of death, we do not uh, live for the entire year, but all of the years in between. So we live for the entire year. So same is the case with this uh, month-wise depreciation. Uh, the year in which we have bought the fixtures, uh, we won't be using it for more than uh, uh, exactly 12 months. And the year in which we sell the asset, again we won't be uh, uh, using the asset for the entire 12 months. So all other months we are going to, all other years we are going to charge depreciation for the full year. Okay. So let us do some more exercises. Okay, let us do some more exercises. We have another exercise with the name of Mr. Ard, sorry, Mr. Ahmed. And in this uh, question, there is something new, and that is residual value. So, what is the residual value of a non-current asset? Residual value is also known as scrap value. What is the scrap value? Scrap value is the estimated value that we will uh, get when we are selling the asset. Ultimately, at the end of its useful life. Okay, so when the asset is no longer uh, is in need and it is uh, not in very good condition, so we sell that asset at the end of the life, and the amount that it will fetch to sell the asset at the end of this useful life is known as residual value or scrap value, uh, also known as salvage value at some time. So scrap value or residual value is only used in a straight line method. And whenever we have a reducing balance method, we never use a residual value or scrap value. Now let us see what will be the difference in the calculation when the residual value is also involved. Now in this question, Mr. Ahmed has bought a machine on 1st November 2018 for 120,000. So it is the cost of the asset. Residual value is also given 20,000. So this means we are buying the machine right now for 120, and we expect to sell this machine after maybe three years or whatever it is the life of the asset after its useful life, we expect to sell the asset for 20,000. Okay, so the entire 120,000 won't be depreciated because we are uh, we are expecting to get 20,000 back. Okay, so the uh, depreciable cost is 100,000. So we are going to charge depreciation on 100,000 only and not the entire 120,000. Okay, so the year is ending on 30th September. And if the year is ending on September, this means year must have been started on 1st October. Okay, we have sold the machine on 31st January 21. So this is the date of disposal, and the rate of depreciation is 10% per annum using straight line. It's a straight line basis. So we need to calculate depreciation for three years, that is 2019, 20, and 21. So let us first uh, calculate for the first year, that is. Uh, uh, so the original cost of the asset, and we bought the asset was. Uh, was 120,000 and the date of uh, purchasing was November 2018. Now the first year is being ended on when? 30th September 2019. Now as you can see the year is ending on September, year, year must have been started in 1st October. Okay, so if the year is ending in September 19, the year must have been started on uh, October 18. Okay, so the year has started in October but uh, we uh, it took us it took Mr. Ahmed one month 
to decide to buy this machine okay so we haven't bought the uh, machine uh, exactly at the start of the year instead we waited for one month that is for the month of october to buy that asset to take this decision and we actually bought the asset on first november okay so instead of uh, using uh, the machine for entire 12 months we have just used the machine for 11 months in the first year okay so what we need to do we need to chart depreciation on for 11 months only so the formula for calculating depreciation uh, for straight line is basically cost multiplied by percentage but in this case there is a residual value as well so what we need to do we need to deduct residual value first from the original cost and the amount that we are left with is depreciable cost so depreciable cost means basically the cost that is uh, we are going to depreciate over its life okay so what we need to do we need to charge 10 percent on 100,000 okay why because this 20,000 will ultimately will be received back uh, when we are actually disposing of the asset and we need to chart depreciation on what amount on 100,000 okay if we apply 100,000 times 10 percent the depreciation is 10,000 and then we need to do pro rata basis why because we haven't used the asset for the entire 12 months instead we have just used the asset for 11 months so the depreciation in the first year is 9168 now what happened in the second year second year is relatively straightforward because uh, there is no month apportionment needs to be made because we have discussed earlier uh, the year that we bought the asset we are going to use it maybe for less than a year but all of the other years uh, uh, until and unless we sold the, that particular asset we are going to char charge depreciation for the entire year because we have used the asset for the entire year so then in the next year we are going to charge depreciation again 120 minus 20 this 20,000 will be constant it will be fixed it is a scrap value and again 100,000 times 10 percent then we have a 10,000 depreciation and thirdly we have depreciation for 21 that is 2021 again 120,000 minus scrap value 20,000 times 10 percent but in the last year there is some confusion and what is this uh, the thing is that we have sold the asset in the last year. Now, as you can see, the year is being ended on 30th September, but we have sold the machine in January. So, instead of charging depreciation till 30th September 21, we are just going to limit our depreciation calculation till January. Now, we need to count that how much months we have actually used the asset in the last year. So, there are two, two ways to count this. Uh, firstly, we can count uh, the actual uh, number of months that we have used the asset. Or secondly, we can also count the months that we haven't used the asset and we need to deduct it from total months. So first, uh, take the earlier uh, method. Now, as you can see, the year is ending in September. So year must have been started on October. Okay, From 1st October 2020 till 31st January 21. So October, November, December, January. So we have only used the asset for four months. October, November, December, January. Okay, so this is a uh, bit will be the easier way to do that because uh, the lesser months are there, the easier will be the calculation for us. Uh, we can also do, the, do that, that we have just used the asset till January and we haven't used the asset for other months. So we can also count for uh, from February till September. So this will be eight months, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, okay. If we deduct eight months from the entire 12 months, then we are left with four months. Okay, so either way, it's the right answer. We need to chart depreciation for four months only. So this would be depreciation using a straight line when you have a residual value. And if instead we do not have a residual value, because that's the case in most of the questions. So we need to chart depreciation on 120,000 directly, 120,000 times 10%. This will be 12,000 in any particular year. And if there are less than uh, 12 months, so we can do the pro rata basis. So this was calculation for straight line and month wise debit. All right, dear students, we have another question for month wise depreciation calculation when there is a residual value. And there is one other thing as well uh, in this question, and that is the life of the asset. So in the previous questions uh, that we solved the depreciation, uh, we have being given by the examiner the percentage of depreciation. Now, instead of giving you the percentage that is 10 or 20 or 25 percent, whatever it is, the examiner can also give you a life of the asset that is useful life. 
Now what happens if we have a useful life given and it is a straight line method. Now let us see what will be the difference in calculation. So it is basically a past paper examination question for the IGCSE board and let me read the data for you. An extract from JAS statement of financial position at 31st December 2019 showed the following. Now uh, here the data that is being given for 2019. We have fixtures and original cost of this is 115,000. The total depreciation till date also known as accumulated depreciation or provision for depreciation is given 77625 and the net book value that we have is 37375. This is net book value. During the year ending 31st December 2020, now previously we were given the depreciation uh, for 2019 uh, for the data for 2019 end of the year and the current year is 2020. Okay, uh, on, in uh, first note, it's given that we have bought new fixtures 30,000 uh, by check uh, on 1st January. So we must have used for entire year from January till December. Okay, and what happened uh, on 30th January 2020, uh, mid of the year, we sold uh, some of the fixtures for 6,000 and we sold it for check. And the fixtures have originally been purchased for 20,000. So this was basically the original cost of the fixtures that we sold this year. Now, what is the depreciation policy? JAS is depreciating fixtures on a straight line basis. Okay. She assumed fixtures will have a useful life of four years. Now, in this question, there is something new that is useful life. So, instead of giving percentage, examiner is given us useful life. Okay. At which time the residual value, that is scrap value, will be 10% of original cost. Okay. So, this means the asset would be sold for 10% of its original cost. Okay. So if I have bought something for 50,000, let us assume. So the uh, scrap value that uh, I can recover it would be 5,000. Okay. That is 10%. So depreciation is charged for each part of the year for which the fixtures are owned. Part of the year means it's a month wise policy. Okay. Part of the year means month wise. So whenever the examiner doesn't mention uh, whether it's uh, here, it is mentioned it's month wise. So what happens when the examiner is silent as to which policy do we use? So we will always assume it's a month wise policy unless otherwise stated. Unless the examiner says that it's a full year policy, we are always going to apply month wise policy. So what we need to do, we need to charge depreciation expense for only first year, or only one year that is 2020. Okay. So how to calculate depreciation we have when we have scrap value given and life is given instead of percentage. So the formula for charging depreciation using straight line is depreciation is equal to cost of the asset minus scrap value. And if there is a percentage, then we need to multiply it with percentage. Okay, we have already learned how to do this previously. But instead of percentage, if the examiner gives you the life of the asset, so then uh, instead of multiplying it with a percentage, we need to divide it with life. Okay. So if the percentage is given, we need to multiply cost minus scrap value multiplied by the percentage or rate. And what happens if the rate is not given, then the examiner must have given you the life. So in that case, we need to divide it by the life. Okay. So depreciation, first of all, as you can see, the cost of the fixtures uh, that we have been given is 115,000. So this is the original cost. Now the question here arises, that sir, have we sold any asset during the year? Yes, we have sold one of the asset on 30th June. So this means the asset that we have disposed of this year, we, we haven't used the asset for the entire year. Instead, we have just used the asset for six months. Okay, so what happens if we have sold the asset halfway through the year? So we need to calculate depreciation in two steps. Uh, in first step, we are going to depreciate, uh, uh, depreciate the asset that we, that we have used for the entire year okay so from the total cost that is 115 what we need to do we need to deduct the asset that we have sold this year uh, halfway through the year okay so we need to deduct 20,000 from the original cost why because then we have the assets that we have used for the entire year okay so 95,000 uh, worth of fixtures we have used it for the entire year so uh, what happens that if we do not have a scrap value, then we can multiply it with rate or we can divide this value with life. Uh, but in this case, we have a scrap value as well. And as you can see, the scrap value is 10% of the original cost. Okay. 
So the original cost that we do have is 95,000. And if we deduct 10%, that is 9,500, then we are left with the, some value. And this value is known as depreciable cost. You do not need to remember this name. This is the technical name for that depreciable cost. And then we need to multiply with the rate or divide it by the life, whichever is available. Now, in this case, we have life instead of rate. So this it's the same. Uh, maybe if the examiner gives you 25% or if it gives you four years, this means the same. Because if we uh, divide 100% by four years, we can get 25% percentage. Okay. So this is the depreciation for the asset that we have used for the entire year. So what happens uh, 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 about the asset that we have sold this year? Now we have used the asset for six months as well. Uh, the, this asset we have used it for half of the year. So what we need to do, we need to charge depreciation for the half year on this asset as well. Now, as you can see, the original cost is 20,000. So what we need to do, we need to minus the scrap value first, that is 10%. So the asset that we have bought for 20,000, we are expecting to get back 2,000 from the ultimate disposal of that asset at the end of the life. So we are left with 18,000 and we need to divide it by four years. So this depreciation is 4,500, but this is for the entire year. Okay. But in this year, as you can see, we have just used the asset till 30th June, that is January to June. It's only six months. So what we need to do, we need to prorate our days, prorate this on six upon 12. So half year depreciation would be charged only, that is 20 to 50. And in the third step, we can charge depreciation on the new asset. Now, as you can see, we have also bought a new fixture uh, on 1st January for 30,000. So we need to charge depreciation for this separately. So 30,000 minus 3,000, again, if 3,000 is the scrap value, that is 10%. So we need to divide it by four years again, that is life. Okay, so this is the depreciation. So what happens if we add all of these, the total depreciation would be 30375. So it is depreciation month-wise and it is uh, with scrap value and when the life of the asset is given instead of rate. Okay, so what happens if uh, this question had a full year policy? If this question had a full year policy, our life would have been much simpler. How? Uh, first of all, we are going to start with the original cost that is 115 at the start of the year. So what we need to do, we need to deduct the asset that we have sold this year. We need to deduct the original cost of the asset that we have disposed of this year. Then uh, we need to add the newer asset that we have bought just this year. Okay. So we need to uh, deduct the old asset that we have sold this year and we need to add up the original cost of the asset that we have bought this year. And then in the end, uh, we are left with the cost. And if there is no scrap value, we can multiply this by the rate or divide it by the life. But in this case, as you can see, we have a 10% scrap value as well. So we need to deduct something additional that is 10% of 125,000. So we are left with depreciable cost. And this cost needs to be depreciated in four years. So we need to divide it by four years and we are left with depreciation of this. So this is the full year policy and that is month wise policy. So I hope my dear students, you are able to understand uh, depreciation month wise when there is a straight line. And in the next part, we are going to discuss depreciation uh, month wise policy when it, we are using RBM method reducing balance. Now.